this season, this beautiful, sparkling December season is known, is notorious for inciting attacks of nostalgia and melancholy. Personally, I am subject to longing for the days so beautifully captured in the Taylor Swift song, The Best Day, as she remembers her mother from the point of view of a child. It's the age of princesses and pirate ships and the seven dwarfs. Daddy's smart and you're the prettiest lady in the whole wide world. This season brings to the surface our underlying and persistent longing for innocence, and that longing can take many forms. We long for a time when we saw the world through the eyes of a child. I have inside me an image of a little boy about three and a half years old. He's wearing a red Fair Isle sweater. He has a round face and curly hair, and he's playing with an old-fashioned wooden toy that when you turn the crank, the angels dance. This is for me an indelible vision of innocence. It still resonates to see that toy the Christmas celebration with such complete openness and wonder. We long for things to be the way they used to be. For one, that might mean a return to their high school physique. For another, it might mean a relationship that she misses. For still another, it might mean a return to the days when the house was overflowing with the energy of children. Or we long for real innocence in the original meaning of the word. We might be carrying around a burden of guilt. Maybe we have disappointed someone or hurt someone or simply not been as loving as we could have been. And we long to be relieved of that burden, to know that we have made it right, that we have been forgiven, that we can start fresh. For the people listening to the words of the prophet Joel, their longing was complicated. They say you can't go home again, but what they mean is you can go home, but it will be different. The view from 50 is not the same as the view from 5. The exile is over. The Persian regime has given permission for the temple to be rebuilt and has started the process of repatriating Judeans who want to return to Jerusalem. God's people can go home again, but they can't go home again. For those who return after the rebuilding of the temple, they're in shock. It is smaller. It is unlovely. It is not the same as Solomon's splendid edifice. Their hearts break all over again. It's not as good as it was. And as a wise preaching professor said, they're not as good as they were either. The people of God who are returning to Judea can only see what has happened to them as a punishment. They've cheated the Lord. They've cooked the books on their relationship with God. They've betrayed the Holy One. And here is the result. Their home, even when they're able to return to it, is not as it was. They're longing for innocence. They're longing to see their home with the uncritical, wondering eyes of a child. They're longing for things to return, hopeful for the way they once were. They're longing to be unburdened of the guilt they carry with them, like an invisible Marine's 65-pound pack. Joel has the words they are longing to hear. Return to me. Return to me, God says through the prophet. Let everyone come, the young, the old, the infants at the breast. Return, return to me. It is not too late because I, your God, am the one who looks at you and sees the curly-headed boy full of wonder and sees the strong-headed girl full of determination. I am the one who looks at you and beholds your original innocence. Return to me. See the world with new eyes, a child's eyes. 
Hear my call afresh. Leave your burdens behind. Return to me.